this is Coach Greg Campy, if you didn't forget, if you didn't remember, longtime member of the upstanding parking committee, not no, fixing no. tickets for I'm, the players. I'm not a member of the committee. I'm the chairman of the committee. All right? that, there's a big difference being a member and being the chairman. What was the vote? Do you recall? Did you win by a landslide? Uh, I think you could pretty much run for anything around here. In 25 years, I've been doing this, so I don't know about that. But um, yeah, and you park wrong, I'll get you. You have one of those little cars with the light. <laughs> yes. You drive around. It's a truck, a, a truck with a 4x4, four four, and I can go anywhere with it, so you be careful where you park. All right, Coach. Thanks for joining us. We'll, we'll jump right into this. Uh, talk about that, that road trip, the first couple of games there. Sort of a tough beginning to the season, but what did you learn from the, about the team and what you need to work on? I, that's why we do this. Is You know, we, we played those three exhibition games. We could do what we want, score at will defend any way we want to defend and, and have success. So you've got to be able to find out what's wrong with your team uh, in the early preseason when you're in a one-bid conference. If we if we were in a different situation, like it, let's say we were in a, a BCS conference where you can get in at large bid, we would do things differently, but we don't get that. So we have to play this type of schedule so that we can learn what's wrong with our team. And right now what we found out is, you know, we got to guard the ball better. Uh, our rotate, we're always in a scramble on defense. We've, we've played three games, and 42% of the shots being taken against us are the three. Uh, you know, we've really guarding the basket well and trying to protect that, but we're giving up the three. So we've got to make some, some uh, little, small little changes on how we guard the basketball and keep it in front of us. And then our biggest weakness is our pick and roll defense. You know, we just, we just struggle with the high ball screen. And, uh, that's our point of emphasis. That's what we're going to, and we're going to see it a lot at Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll see it at Michigan State. We'll see it at Tennessee. You know, a lot of the big time PCS schools, that's all they run is pick and roll. So uh, that's not good for us. We've got to get better at it. What is the number one uh, thing to do to cut down on turnovers? What is the biggest factor that you need to eliminate? Well, we have to value the basketball. We've got some guys. Uh, you know, our point guard is, is new and running the offense, and we did a better job at uh, Boise, and I'm sure we're going to have our days where we don't uh, do very well with that, but, you know, we, we put that as a point of emphasis in practice, and um, we just teach the value of the basketball, you know, and, and it, you harp on it and harp on it, and you dictate playing time on it, and you do things like that, you'll, we'll be fine. Uh, anytime you break in a new point guard in our system, in our offense, with the speed that we play at, there's going to be mistakes made, and we just got to learn to limit those mistakes. We will. Are you comfortable with Duke being a volume scorer as he's been in a couple games this season? Yeah, but he's not a volume shot guy. He, he's, he's a volume scorer because he's shooting 57% from the floor through three games. When you realize where we've played at, that, that's pretty good. So, I mean, he's not scoring 21 points a game because he's taking 40 shots. He's, uh, he's getting the free throw line, he's making his free throws, and he's, sh and he's shooting, shooting the ball at a very high percentage. So you're comfortable at this point because he's shooting so well? So you want me to answer that comfortable question? I'm very comfortable. I'm not comfortable with the turnovers, but I'm very comfortable with how, how his, uh, his participation in our offense is. We've got to sh uh, take, he's got to understand when and where he does things, and he'll, he'll learn that through playing time. After the game the other day, you, you were less than thrilled about you know teams, the way they were guarding, uh, in particular Travis Bader and Corey Petros. Is that something you think, in, at least in respect to uh, Travis Bader, the way teams are going to guard him this season? Well, they're going to do everything but tackle him. And they're holding him and grabbing him and trying to knock into him. And off the ball, they've got his jersey in his hands and that. And if the officials just take care of it, it won't be an issue. That's the big thing, is getting the officials to take care of it. It's going to be hard to do when you're, you know, playing in, in, out in the middle of nowhere. Um, because those officials are never going to see me again. They don't, they don't care about Oakland. They don't, I don't have no say or poll or anything in their world, their leagues. So they're going to do what the hell they want to do. And uh, we, that won't happen in our, it better not happen in our league. And when we play games around here, they, you know, it, it, it better be, handled properly and fairly. It, 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 it was just a shame. It's just a shame what they did to him in Boise. I mean, I mean, you, you could be prosecuted for what they were doing to him. Going, uh, are you comfortable with your rotation that you've got worked out so far? No, we're going to make a little change in the starting lineup for, for Saturday's game against Pitt. I'm not getting Raphael enough minutes, and uh, Dante is not getting done what I want done on a consistent basis, so we're going to move Raphael into the starting lineup. And, 
uh, give him an opportunity to get some minutes. I think I'm only, uh, most he's played is seven minutes. And, you know, he needs he needs to play a lot more minutes than that. And the only way he's going to get better is to play minutes. So if I start him, if I start him the first half and start him the second half, even if I get mad at him, that's going to guarantee him about ten minutes. Um, so, you know, hopefully he's going to get that up more to 15 to 20. Right. So when you're looking at having Dante off the bench, you think that's a better role for him? We'll find out. He's, he's going to have to start doing exactly what I want him to do or he's not even going to be off the bench. So then, then that might be the best role for him. We're going to find out. He's, he's got to play with confidence and he's got to, uh, he, he's make, he makes too many, too many mental errors. And those mental errors always seem to bite us at the wrong time. One guy that's uh, had some production off the bench, Ryan Bass. He had uh, 11 points in 10 minutes for you the other day. Do you see more of that from him? Well, that's what I told you before is, you know, he, we're going to go in the game and tell him to score. And uh, he's got to shoot free throws better. He's not shooting his free throw very well. Otherwise, I think he would have gotten us a few more critical points in that game. Um, but, yeah, Bass is, Bass is doing fine. He's, you know, he didn't shoot it very well the first two games, but he, I think it's four or five in this last game. And that's what a guy in his position does. You throw him out there, and if it's going in, you keep him out there. And if it's not going in, you take him out. He's very comfortable with the position. I think he kind of likes it. He likes the idea of going there and scoring. Uh, I never, your coach ever let you do that? My coach never let me do that. So I was pretty much, once I was on the bench, I stayed on the bench. So, uh, so you, you knew your role. All right. Well, Bass, yes. knows, Bass knows his role. You know, I would have loved for a coach to say, hey, go score. Uh, nobody ever said that to me, though. Yeah, that's before I knew what a role player was. I just wanted to play. Yeah. So, um, Talking about Lloyd Neely, when do you see him starting? Or do you see him starting this season? Well, I don't know. I mean, I... If he's starting, that means one of two things. Somebody's really playing poorly, and he was given a chance, or he played so well that he just took it the chance. So if it's, if it's the second of those scenarios, then I'm going to be ex extremely happy. Lloyd's got a bright, bright future, big upside, um, but he's a freshman. You know, physically, I don't think he's quite ready to play the pace that we play. Uh, the amount of, you know, up and down in this game is just, at, at, it's so fast. That he's just got to learn the speed of the game, but he's going to be a really good player at Oakland. Uh, we're really excited to have Lloyd here. Something that Oakland Radio and Neil Rule uh, likes to point out is your ability, your team's ability to score on inbounds plays. Is that something you've been working on the last couple of years, or has that always been a, a staple of your coaching repertoire? We have one inbound play. We score on it all the time. We have for 30 years. Eventually, somebody's going to realize that and guard it, but until they do, we'll just keep running that one play. It's a, I'm no genius. It's one play. It's the same play every game. Same play. Well, I can't see it on the radio. I mean, so I'll have to look for it in person. Well, basically, Bader makes a three or Valentine gets a layup. So it's one of one of those two things usually happen. It's the same play. We've run it for 30 years. It's there's no genius to it. There's no coaching to it. There's no nothing to it. We line up and run it. For some reason, people feel sorry for us and let us get. I mean, we got the layup three times the other day. So I guess they just felt sorry for us and let us have. Talking about the, the rotation with the big guys again, do you see Joey Asbury playing more of a role than Korab this season? Well, right now, we, we on our travel team, we took Joey, and we did not take Korab. So unless I'm screwing around with it, uh, that means Joey's ahead of him. And I thought Joey played very well in the minutes he got in the uh, Albion game. And then he got five minutes against Louisiana, and I thought he played very solid in those five minutes. I'm very pleased with him. Um, I think he's just, he's, he's ahead of Korab at this point. Now, a lot can happen in, during the course of a year. Um, but right now, in the pecking order, yes, Joey would go in the game before Korab. And with uh, Raphael starting, does that mean he's physically 100%? Well, we're going to give, we're, he better be. I mean, <laughs> he says he is. So he's I'm gonna, sure he'll find yeah, out quick. Right, he's going to get an opportunity. We were, you know, we didn't bring him here. You don't bring a kid in as a junior to not play. And uh, we brought him here to play him. We needed help. We feel very fortunate that he came, and he was doing a really nice job, and he got hurt. And that set him back, and instead of, I don't want it to be seven games from now that we say, okay, let's, uh, you know, we're, our four spot has not been as productive as we want it to be. Okay, Raphael, here's your chance. Let's go show that you can play. Thinking back, to, or thinking ahead to Pitt, but also looking back, when you played them in the NCAA tournament, uh, same coach, I'm assuming he runs a similar system these days. Do you remember anything about that game that uh, you can exploit on Saturday? Not, not the only thing I remember about that game is we were winning and Derek Nelson took an elbow to the head and 
split his face open and 20 minutes later they picked all the blood up and all the momentum was gone and they went on like a 10-0 run and we were never in the game again. And Derek came back in the second half and played and didn't score a point. So that's about the only thing I remember from that game. And honestly, uh, what's your name? Paul. Paul. Honestly, Paul. Same last name. Yeah. Different pronunciation. Yes. Spelled well. Honestly, Paul, I don't care about Pittsburgh. I don't. I, I'm going to watch some tape of them, but we're getting ready for our conference, and I, right now I care about Oakland. And so all my preparation, my staff watches all the Pittsburgh stuff and does that. I, all my preparation is Oakland. I'm trying to get and figure us out. And we're playing these tough teams so that I can see us stripped naked, all right? And I mean stripped naked. So we got all the, all the warts, all the pimples, everything's going to show up against these teams. And then how do we get beautified? All right. And that's what, that's what my job is right now. So Stream makeover? Yes. I don't care what Pitt does. I don't care if they pick and roll. I don't care if they shoot the three. I really don't care. My staff does. I don't. I want Oakland to get good. And so that's what I'm doing now. I'll watch, I'm going to watch the Pitt-Lehigh game tonight. And that'll be the only thing. It won't be much of a. Yeah, Lehigh's pretty good, and Pitt beat him. Pretty. Yeah. Pretty spanked good. him. So, uh, you know, I'm going to watch that game tonight, and that'll be the only Pitt I take. Uh, you know, my my preparation for Oakland versus Pitt is going to be about Oakland. Thinking, of, uh, thinking about the game though, Big East uh, has a very physical reputation. Oakland's been beefing up, getting in the weight room in the off season. Do you see that uh, having a factor in this game? Well, I hope that um, the game is officiated properly. Uh, usually when you play the big boys, you're going to have pretty good officials. And uh, the, game, the games like that are going to be more physical. There's going to be a lot more pushing, shoving, holding, grabbing. I just, you know, I just want Bader to be officiated fairly. I, I don't think him standing 25 feet from the ball and running to it, he should have his jersey being pulled and held and grabbed and all that kind of stuff. So. That's the only thing we hope for. It, it should be a very physical contest. That's what Pittsburgh's known for. Um, you know, we want to go in there. We want to play the best we can. We don't want to get hurt. But we, we'll be as physical as we can be. Looking forward to the future. Uh, National Signing Day yesterday. You guys have a couple incoming. Um, can you speak on their future? We should be extremely excited about our it, this class. Is, you know, I, I mentioned this early in, the, early in the spring last year, that this was a huge recruiting year for us. I think you and I talked about that. You might have even written something about that. And how important this recruiting class was for Oakland University. And we hit a home run. I mean, we hit, we hit it out of the park. We're just extremely excited about this class. And so do you guys know he's getting married? You're not, you're not like paying her to do this or anything like that. Do you think I have enough money to look at me, <laughs> to pay someone to be with me? Well, you? I don't know. I'm just asking. I just, you know, sports reporters, they're not known for their, their I mean, they're out at night watching games. You know, we're also and, not known for our, high income either. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, so, you know so. that I was married on August 22nd. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think that was the day I was married. That was like You should probably go ago. ask your wife before we air this. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Thanks for joining us today, Coach. Appreciate the time as always. My pleasure. And we'll see you uh, on your safe travels to Pitt and everywhere else across the country. And we'll see you when you get back to the arena. All right, that could be like two years from now, but we'll be there. Great, thanks.